In the last few videos, we learned how to program for loops. Adelphi gives us more types of loops to handle repetitions. Today, we will look at another kind of loop in Delphi, called a while loop. We will explore while loops in this project. We will also compare while loops with for loops. In our project, both loops must show the squares of base numbers 1 to 10. Hi, it's Gerard here from Learn Delphi, where I help you to grow your Delphi programming knowledge and skills step by step and line by line. If you see value in this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And all the links that I mention in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. In every video, we focus on specific lessons and use those concepts in sample projects. And I walk you through the code step by step and line by line. I start with the code immediately, so I do not demonstrate how to create the graphical user interface, so that you only focus on the code of the lesson we are doing. If you want, you can download the graphical user interface and anything else I use in the projects to start immediately where I start with this lesson. You can download the graphical user interface from my Patreon page at patreon.com slash learndelphi. That link is also in the description. And I'm using Delphi 10.3 Community Edition to record these lessons. There's also a link in the description if you want to download the free copy of Delphi. So you can pause the video here, go do the downloads and watch the videos I link in the description. Then come back to this video to do the project with me. <laughs> If you downloaded the starter files, open the project in Delphi and let's jump in. Double click the button captioned for loop. This event handler handles the on click event of a button named btn for loop. I already wrote a few lines of code in this event handler. Let's quickly see what this code do. Here I declare two integer variables. int base number must store a base number from 1 to 10. And int square number must store the square of the base numbers. Here I assign 1 to int base number. And I also assign 1 to int square number. Then I clear the list box named lst result. This statement adds an item to the list box that reads square numbers 1 to 10 with a for loop. Then I add a blank item to the list box. Here I calculate the square of the base number with the alpha square function. And then I assign it to int square number. And concatenate it with the words squared is after also converting it to a string. You learned how to use the square function in lessons 15.4 and 15.7. Then I increment int base number with the ink procedure. Here I started int base number with 1. So the ink procedure increments int base number to 2. These three statements are then repeated another 9 times. That means int base number increments with every repetition until it reaches 10. And with every repetition we calculate the square of int base number and add the result to the list box. Let's look at the result. Run the project. Click the first button. The list box shows the square of all the numbers from 1 to 10. Close the form. With all these repetitions, our code is too difficult to manage. For example, if we change the name of the list box in the graphical user interface, we must also change it in the code in 10 places. By looping the repeating statements, we can reduce the code and make it easier to make future changes. To do that, we only need the first set of statements. So select all these repetitions from the second set of statements to the 10th batch. Now delete all these lines. Make a new line above this statement. Type 4 followed by a space over type i with int base number. Then replace low with 1 and replace i with 10. So this for loop will iterate from 1 to 10. Go one line down. Type begin, put your cursor after this line and press enter. Now these three lines are included in the loop. You can indent these statements to make it easier to read. The for loop will automatically increment from 1 to 10. So we don't need the ink procedure anymore. So you can delete it from the loop. Now run the project. Click for loop. We get the same results in the list box, but with much less code. And if we change the name of the list box in the future, we only have to change it in one statement instead of 10. Close the form. Click the design tab at the bottom of the IDE. Double click the while loop button. Here I added the same code we saw in the previous buttons event handler. These batches are repeated 10 times again. So let's do the same as before. 
Delete all the repetitions from the second batch until the last one. Make a new line above this statement. Type while followed by a space. Over type true with int base number less than 10. A while loop doesn't have a low and a high value, so it also doesn't increment automatically. A while loop repeats while a condition is not met yet. In this case, it will keep on looping while int base number is below 10. Go one line down, type begin, put your cursor after this line and press enter. Now these three lines are included in the loop. You can indent these statements to make it easier to read. The while loop will not automatically increment from 1 to 10, so we still need the ink procedure here. Every time the loop does a cycle, the ink procedure will increment int base number. And when it goes back to the top of the loop, it will evaluate if the number is still below 10. If int base number is not less than 10, the compiler will not enter the loop. Now run the project again. Click while loop. The list box only displays numbers 1 to 9. The reason for that is because when int base number is incremented to 10, here with the ink procedure, the compiler doesn't enter the loop again, because the number is not less than 10 anymore. So our programming logic is wrong. Let's go and fix it. Close the form. Change this condition to less than and equal to 10. Run the project again. Click the while button. Now we get the correct results in the list box. And we have the same benefits as with a for loop. If we change the name of the list box in the future, we only have to change it in one statement instead of 10. Close the form. This while loop continues to iterate for as long as the base number stays less than 10. We can also instruct the loop to iterate while the square number is less than 100. Let's try it. Go to the while loop and change it to read while int square number less than equal to 100. Now we evaluate the square number instead of the base number. While it is less than equal to 100, the loop must complete another cycle. Run the program again. Click the while loop button. Now we get an 11th item in the list box. Let's also fix that. Close the form. The reason we get an 11th item is because the loop continues while the square number is less than equal to 100. The square of 10 is 100, so it is equal to the condition. Therefore the compiler will enter the loop one more time. Go back to the loop and remove the equal sign. Run the project. Click while loop. Now we get the correct results. Close the form. Notice we removed the ink procedure in the for loop, but we kept it in the while loop. A while loop is not a counter controlled loop, so it doesn't increment automatically. While loops cycle while the condition is not met yet, which differs from a for loop that cycles from a low value to a high value. Also notice that both a for loop and a while loop first check the condition before the cycling starts. For example, this for loop checks at the start of the loop if int base number is in the range 1 to 10 before the loop is entered. And the compiler checks at the start of a while loop that int square number is less than 100 before the loop is entered. So in both cases, as long as the condition at the top of the loop is still true, the compiler enters the body of the loop. We will use this demo again in the next lesson, so make sure you save it. Next time we will explore another kind of loop called a repeat until loop. If you had fun with this project, leave a comment. And if you learned something new, please like, subscribe and share my lessons with your friends. Thank you for watching and a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon.com. Happy coding! See you next time!